We are live. It's two o'clock. I see Florinda and Michaela here. Welcome to the webinar. Let's wait another minute or so until everyone is here. That would be great. And in the meantime, make yourself uh, uh, comfortable and check out the dashboard and all the functions on it. You can uh, also send us questions through the question box or the chat box. And you can wave your hand as well during this webinar. Let's see who else is dropping in. Also, Helene de Hoon is already with me here. You can't see her yet, but I will bring her up in a bit. I hope everyone can hear and see me well. Also see the slides that I've prepared for today. Let's see. Excited to be here today. This is our first webinar for this academic year. So this, we're firing up this academic year with this now. And it's good to have you here. So I think let's just, um, Let's just get started. Uh, well, welcome. My name is Ula. I've invited you here to this webinar today. Uh, I work for the Master Performing Public Space. Um, I mainly do the recruitment and the international relations for this, for this master program. And I'm happy to have you here today. Um, I will just hear a quick overview of what we'll talk about today. I uh, will give you an introduction on the Fontys Arts University overall, of which we are part of. Uh, we'll show you a quick video of uh, the premises. Then, of course, more about our master program, performing public space, the structure, which is quite unique, uh, and the setup. I will show you a quick um, clip of our, one of our boot camps, uh, which I will get back to you later about that. And as mentioned, we have special guest uh, Helene de Hoon here. She's the head of studies. Um, then I will uh, quickly uh, yeah, give you just a, um, an, an update on the application process and the, some important deadlines. And at the end, uh, we will finish uh, with, a, with an open uh, Q&A. That's the time where you can uh, um comment you can send us questions in the uh, through the chat box and we will be um sure to answer all your questions uh regarding this master program uh so this is in a nutshell what we'll be up to today so let's uh, get started uh, fontis university uh, is one of the largest universities in the netherlands actually and we are the arts department basically or the arts institute of this uh, uh, university we're located in tilburg and we offer 15 arts programs um, uh, and um, eight of which are internationally oriented um, and we cover pretty much all the art forms there are from music to dance theater and of course also our master performing public space um, just to give you an idea, here we are on the map. Uh, we are located in the south of the Netherlands. There's Tilburg. Um, we are a mid-size uh, university city, quite vibrant uh, and really pretty close to the border of Belgium. Uh, and now I will show you a video of uh, the building. Let me see, I hope this works. Uh, so you get an idea of, of where we are. So we're flying here over city center, Tilburg. This is pretty much, yeah, this is the main entrance of the university here. You can see flying through there to the main reception. and through there to the campus. And as mentioned, we have 15 different art programs here under one roof. 
also education programs. Here uh, under this roof there are the dance studios, music academy, visual arts, design, even a rock academy. Here you see the campus again. And this is where you will be spending your time during the boot camps. I will explain that a little later, but this uh, will be uh, for a few weeks uh, a year your headquarters where you will um, be attending lectures and workshops or using the library. All right. Let's, I hope this uh, gave you a bit of a, an idea where we are. Uh, and now a little bit more about our master program. That's why we're here for, of course. Um, the application is now open for the upcoming year, for 2020-21. Uh, we kicked off in 2017, so we're a pretty uh, new program, master program. Uh, and so we're in our third year now. And this is a quick overview of the team, uh, Helene de Hoon. We have her here today with us. Um, best to introduce yourself later. But uh, who else is on the team? We have three more teachers. Danai Teodorido, she's from Greece. She's a theater director and playwright. Uh, she, sorry, she's a performance maker and a researcher. Uh, of course, uh, David Lima Verde is from Brazil. Uh, he's an art educator specializing in participatory arts practices. Uh, and Paul de Braune, he's from Belgium and he's uh, the theater director and playwright. Um, and one of these would, if you decide to study with us, uh, be your individual coach throughout the year, guiding your project. Um, but of course, the entire team makes our um, our uh, master program. Uh, a little bit more about the structure of this program. I mentioned it is quite unique. Uh, why? Well, it's a one-year master. It is full-time. Um, it is international, not just English taught, but internationally oriented. Uh, it is multidisciplinary, so we do invite artists from different backgrounds, from different art disciplines to join us. And we are a blended learning program. So the majority of the program happens online. And um, the other part happens on site in Tilburg um, during the uh, um, intensive weeks that we organize throughout the year. There will be three intensive um, boot camps uh, in the year, usually October, January and May, <clears throat> where everyone will come together on site um, and uh, attend classes, attend lectures. We invite international guests um, and uh, artists to work with you. Um, and of course, the teachers will be there um, and you We'll do field trips, all sorts of things. So this is really um, the most fun part, of course, where the magic happens, where everyone comes together. At the core of this program really sits your individual project. With this project, you would apply to the master um, and uh, the coaches, of course, your peers, all the, the body of knowledge that we provide, so the theory, and of course, also all, all our international partners, or national partners, of course, researchers, artists, or organizations uh, will have impact on your project. And um, that being said, of course, you in, you apply with, with your concept, but we do encourage you to take advantage of all this input and, um, uh, and um, develop your arts project further. Um, I told you that the majority of the uh, master program happens online. You will be getting an, a login, um, an account with Project Campus. This is the platform we use, um, where all our students are connected uh, and of course with the teachers, with each other. Uh, and there's this is the space where you will be um, chatting with each other, there's a forum, forum space, there will be uh, assignments on here, you will be able to upload and download materials and exchange with your peers and teachers. Um, 
of course, we also do uh, live uh, webinars and lectures online. Uh, and we really um, feel strong about keeping a very um, close relationship to our students and um, interact and engage constantly uh, with you while you're back in your home country, probably working on your art project. But not necessarily, of course, um, you are free to also move to the Netherlands throughout the year. Um, but this platform will be your main source uh, and your main um, window to the program. But um, of course, besides that, uh, we organize the boot camps. And um, these are the uh, intensive weeks that I mentioned before. And I think it's a good idea to show you a quick trailer just to give you a feel for what we're up to in those intensive weeks. This is a trailer we made of the first year, so enjoy. Okay, so you see it's a wild mix of um, on-site, off-site um, lectures, indoor-outdoor exchange, um, and yeah, it's really it's really a fun time for the team, of course, for us, for the students who come together and spend the two weeks here with us in Tilburg. Um, so this was really a, a very short overview. Um, lots of this you find online. Uh, of course, but we're here to also um, give you a bit more extra information and insights. And for that, I invited Helene de Hoon, um, and I hope she can uh, give you a bit more of an idea what to expect um, of the program. And um, let me bring you up here, Helene. And. Give you the floor. Hello, Helene. Hi. <laughs> Thanks I've for been being waiting, here. Uh, I've been waiting patiently on the other end of the line. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thanks for that. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah. As you heard, this was really just a quick overview um, and really in a nutshell. But maybe you could give a bit more insights uh, or give our student or the, the attendees um, an idea of what to expect. Um, maybe also already during the application process uh, mm -hmm. and the and the program itself. OK, um, I would suggest starting from the beginning, but feel free to interrupt me, Ula, and, and uh, ask some questions. Um, at the heart of our program are the research projects of our students. So when you apply to the Master Performing Public Space, we expect that you already have an idea in mind of what you want to research and what you want to create. Um, and our program shapes itself around those research trajectories. So we try to react on the topics that the students uh, are interested in, are involved in, are working on. Um, and of course, we have our own, uh, Ulla mentioned already, body of knowledge. We have 
three clear lines within our program, namely public space discourse, obviously, artistic research and co-creation. And we have assignments that are following those lines. So important to mention, we start with you, your idea and your work. There is uh, a body of knowledge, a line of content that we think is important for our students to um, follow. And during a week, I think maybe it's interesting for you to know what a working week looks like. We really see the program as a full-time program. So that means on a daily basis you are studying in the traditional sense, you are reading, you are writing, but you are also practicing your research. So we're looking for artistic action research in public space, which means that on a daily basis you will be prototyping your research in public space. Um, and that takes quite a bit of time. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm thinking that so so those is uh, those things are important to mention. Ulla talked about the boot camps as uh, the most exciting part of the program. It is exciting in the sense that we all come together in one place. During the year, you are working mostly on your own project focusing on your individual research. And in those boot camps, you switch to uh, this learning community. So influencing each other's work, uh, co-creating. And in these boot camps, we invite, of course, the, your teachers are there, but we invite many different guests to inspire your work. And we try um, every time to invite guests that are current but also guests that are relevant for the students we have at that time which means that at the start of each year we don't know yet what our bootcamp programs look like so students come to uh, Tilburg three times a year around October January and May and right now we are end of November we are preparing the bootcamp for January trying to coordinate with all these um, guest lecturers artists that will give workshops to come uh, to Tilburg in January to work with our students. Very good. Thank you, Helene. Yeah, I talked a bit about the content of the program, oh. about the content of the boot camps and, and the start of what is needed for application. But perhaps mm -hmm. you can direct me a bit more in. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Um, that would be indeed the next um, the next topic, the application details. Um, but feel free to also um, add something. Maybe mm -hmm. even yeah, I could see maybe around the project plan. Um, maybe you can talk about that a bit more. All right. Um, basically, you would start um, if you decide to uh, apply. You go to our website, and um, you have to first register for application that's on studylink.nl then you would um, receive a uh, application form via email which you will have to fill in your details um, and after that you will send us you will need to send us an email uh, with your cv a motivation letter and a project plan and maybe helene you can tell a little bit more about this project plan because this is really something that sticks out also yeah. to uh, from other programs and application processes. Yeah, I think it's a it's a complicated aspect of our uh, application process in the sense that we already expect from our applicants that they know what they want and that they know what they are going to research, but also that they have an idea of what they want to learn from the master program. So we are not necessarily um, a skills program. We expect our applicants to already have this uh, creative or, and artistic skills and then come with their topic to our program. We don't per se have a format for the project plan also because we don't want to restrict um, what is in and what is out, but it has to be already quite specific as to what a student wants to research and what they're planning to do. 
So we expect in a project plan a clear topic, a clear research question, uh, and I also really prefer that they that they know already where their project will take place. You mentioned our program offers the possibility to uh, learn on distance as well, so you can work for the majority of the year in the place where you are already based, but it is also possible to transpose your work to the Netherlands. But we're asking you to decide before. Of course, with our topic public space, it makes sense that you have an idea of not only what, but also where. True. And of course, also um, always appreciated in this project plan are um, visuals, sketches, video links, um, or reference materials. Uh, that give us a bit of an uh, idea. Yeah, I think in this overview it doesn't mention portfolio, but we do ask for portfolios. Yes, yes, I uh, yeah forgot to um, add that in there. Um, the the in the full list is also on the website uh, to double check. But of course, the portfolio uh, to know more about your background and your practice. Uh, very good. Um, Maybe to add, it mm -hmm. says on the bottom of this slide, bachelor degree. We are mm -hmm. an artistic research program, so we expect our applicants to have an existing established artistic practice. It doesn't mean per se that your bachelor degree has to be an artistic bachelor program. We have students that are coming in from different disciplines. We've had a student with a background in philosophy, in literature, in law. Um, so it doesn't have to be that you come in with a bachelor, bachelor degree from dance or theater, for example. Just yeah, that's, uh, that's to keep in mind. For sure. Yeah, that's good. Good you mentioned that. Um, okay, and here um, are here's an overview of the most important deadlines coming up. Just as a reminder, we have a early review deadline, which is February 28th. Um, this is a deadline we've installed for those applicants that really want to get a head start, um, that also perhaps want feedback on their uh, projects, their application, um, and um, uh, might want time to revise their application of uh, their project plan. This is this is the deadline uh, for you uh, to get a head start and also to receive a um, early um, confirmation um, that you're accepted or not. Um, many of our applicants need this confirmation uh, for, for example, um, funding uh, grant applications or for um, Financial plan. aid applications, exactly, or travel, yes. Um, but the the standard application deadlines for non-EU nationalities is March 31st and for EU nationalities uh, May 31st. Why do we distinguish, of course, um, the um, uh, application process itself uh, varies if you're an, uh, if you have an EU or non-EU nationality or, of course, the visa process if you decide to move to the Netherlands. Um, all these deadlines you can also find on our website, of course. So um, that was it. I feel we really flew over this, but um, uh, well, I hope we did give you added insights and added information. Uh, now, if you have more questions, you can find the question box and just go ahead and type your question in and we are here waiting for you. But of course, no pressure. You can always be in touch uh, after this webinar. If you think of a question later on, feel free to send us an email or also um, uh, a message on Facebook. We, uh, we're quite responsive and would love to hear from you. So it's always interesting also to, um, to hear what uh, what um, potential students are asking or interested in. We always try to obviously provide all information we can, but let's see, do you guys have any questions? 
we're also curious who's on the other end of the definitely of this yes. transmission. Say hi. <laughs> Who's there? Who's there? On a Saturday. And if there's no questions, then I guess everything was clear, but um, feel free to say hi. Oh, hello. Thank you, Ula and Helene. I don't have any questions for the time being. You have answered my main question about the bachelor requirements. That's okay, very great. good. Thank you, Florinda, for your message and for taking the time. For those of you who are curious, perhaps um, sometimes we get asked about how many students we have or who are in uh, this group. At this moment, we have 12 students. Um, I would say we can take up to a maximum of 14, 15 students, depending on the applications. Um, coming from everywhere. Only one Dutch student at this time, uh, many European students and some uh, non-EU students at this in this year, one from Peru and one from India. But we've had students from Brazil and China in the past and all yeah. over. All over, really, yes. It's always interesting yeah. um, how and things come together and also that influences uh, the group dynamic um, definitely a lot and but it's one of the things. positive feedbacks we get from from students to come into this interdisciplinary group but also this international group with uh, with all these different uh, backgrounds and perspectives uh, that that is a welcome addition to their research because mm -hmm. of course we have as practitioners an idea about our own uh, work in our own public space, but the work can change fundamentally if you if you uh, transpose it to a different context. Also, if you're talking about what is uh, possible uh, and allowed in different contexts, and we have very interesting dynamic discussions about that when we come together in in Tilburg. We have another question uh, here from Michaela. That's a very good one, actually. Um, thank you for your talk. I'm wondering why uh, my background is in maker studies with interest in public space, but how important is performative aspect for studying at your program? Well, we can have an interesting talk about what is performativity or what is performance. I think what is important to mention is um, the title of our program is performing public space and it's not performance in public space or performing in public space. So we're talking about the public space that is somehow performative or performed by how we act or what we do in public space. So sometimes we get in, in a confusion about performance in public space being theater or dance or music, but we're talking about artistic intervention in public space in whatever form. That's also why our program is interdisciplinary. So uh, uh, there's a great range of, of possibilities. And in our um, artistic research line, we ask students to prototype different forms of artistic intervention in public space. And very often I see in students that these interventions start with being in conversation with people in public space. And there's not really much else happening yet rather than being in relation in this specific context. And then later it starts to shape itself more into an artistic product, whatever form that may, uh, that may take or artistic process, I should say, but also product. Thank you. I hope this was clear. That is great. Thank you. Oh, good. Glad we could answer questions. Other questions from the two of you, then I think we can wrap it up for today. Should we? 
or is there anything else you want to add, Helene? Well, let's leave let's leave one or two minutes as a as a window of opportunity. Of course, we okay. know that there's more people who have signed up for this webinar who will um, watch it later. I'm thinking about if there's some subjects we didn't cover as much yet mm -hmm. that would be interesting for uh, those other attendees. Um, I think it's important to stress that. You can always reach out to our program if you want to have more information. It's possible via email, via Facebook. We are quite fast to respond. And we're also happy to set up individual Skype calls to talk a bit more about your application or uh, if your research is a good fit for, for our program. Because that's important, of course. We are Because we are so focused on um, the, the content that the student is bringing in, you have to figure out if our way of working is fitting for uh, your needs. Yes, true. Very good. And also I would like to mention that this is the first webinar of this year uh, and part of a webinar series. This was the introduction of our program. The next webinar will be about um, artistic research, with, which is a, a core to our program, and the final webinar will be um, about the student projects, the current student projects that are being developed within the program. So we will have um, uh, some of the teachers here and some of the uh, students also attend the, the upcoming webinars to talk about their work and their processes. So. Um, but all information you can find on the website and of course on Facebook. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess we can um, call it a day for now, I think. We've covered quite a lot of ground. And if there are no other questions, then um, we will thank you now and hope to hear more of you. Be in touch, don't be a stranger. Thank you, Helene. You're very welcome. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.